Good afternoon. We now call to order the meeting of the directors of the New York Convention Center Development Corporation for Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. We'd like to know for the record that this meeting is being webcast. The directors have received the relevant written materials in advance of today's meeting and, of course, are free to ask any questions at any time. Please note that we welcome public comment on the items of the following agenda. To ensure maximum opportunity for participation, speakers representing themselves may speak for up to two minutes each, and those representing groups may speak for up to four minutes with one speaker per group. Speakers' comments may address only the items considered at today's meeting. Before we begin the substantive portion of the meeting, I would like to ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on today's agenda. Uh, hearing none, uh, we will go forward. And uh, the first item of business is Robin Stout, our president, to present a request for authorization to reallocate funding under the new York Convention Center Renovation Funding Agreement. Uh, yes, thank you, Henry. Uh, just to lay out the, the uh, parameters of this meeting, uh, there's, there's only this one action item which I'm about to present. Um, but uh, since we are meeting only approximately quarterly, uh, I thought it was important to have the meeting. You'll see uh, an update, uh, which is a more expansive one uh, than was given to the OC directors, so that will uh, help hold your attention. Um, but uh, to start with, if I can interrupt you, would you approve the minutes before we do the presentation? Well, that's, I'm sorry, that's the other thing I should, I should uh, talk about, which is that we have approved minutes for a March meeting. I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, March. Uh, but we haven't yet approved minutes for uh, the January meeting or the most recent meeting, which is June. I think I had said before in June that we we're having issues with the um, uh, with the transcription uh, based on the, um, the, the the live stream. But we have a uh, a reporter here, so we hope that we uh, can uh, take care of those issues and that by the next meeting we will be uh, entirely caught up on our minutes. Okay, well then we are ready for you to present these uh, requests. Yes, thank you. Um, the directors will remember that uh, you have authorized CCDC to enter into a funding agreement with CCOC, um, pursuant to which uh, OC and DC agree on uh, capital improvement projects to be done within the existing facility. Uh, and since the execution of that funding agreement, the CCDC directors have authorized a collective total of over $31 million, which is set forth in your Exhibit A of the materials. Uh, the directors uh, both approve allocations and approve reallocations, and today's item is a reallocation. Uh, so the first thing you see in your uh, materials is that three projects previously approved uh, have been completed for less than the allocated budgets. Um, and that, uh, that differential between the approved and the, and the uh, actual needed expenditure uh, for the three projects in uh, combination totals a little bit over $500,000, which leaves uh, that $500,000 to be um, uh, allocated for uh, different projects. So also, on, as you'll see on page two of your materials, then that five, $527,000 to be exact uh, is recommended to be allocated in three separate projects, two of which uh, have been uh, previously approved but need additional funds, and one of which, one of which is a, would be a new project, which is to replace the level one uh, uh, joints um, in the existing facility. So, as I say, um, this reallocation is within uh, CCDC's capital budget for the year, as set forth in your materials, and therefore no CCDC capital budget amendment is required. The directors are being asked to authorize the reallocation of previously authorized capital improvement funding as set forth in the materials as I described. Uh, thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Robin? If not, we'll entertain a motion to approve. I just have one question. Uh, Please. I understand this is the joints on level one. Are they going to have to redo the joints on level three at some point? Uh, well, at some point. I mean, I we've, actually, we've actually done the joints on level three. Done, the joints were done on level three last year, and so we, we, this is this should be the final part of the project. Great. Any other questions? Motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, so then, I think we have your president's report is the next item, Rob. Am I correct? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, so, in order to begin the President's report, I would turn to uh, Gus Mamis, who is our project manager, uh, project, the director of our project management team. I think all of you met Gus uh, at the June meeting. Um, as I say, we have a bit of more ex of an expansive uh, uh, presentation for you on a construction update, uh, and so we'll hope you'll find it of interest. Yes, Gus. If you give me the nod, I will. I will uh, change the slides for you. Sure. Good afternoon. Um, we've made some substantial progress and hit some very notable events uh, that occurred over the past since our last uh, last presentation back in June. Um, Let's see. What do I need to press to get this going? So this is our cover slide, just give an overall, an overview of the entire project. As you can see, the completed version of the, pro the completed uh, project on the right-hand side adjacent to the existing Javits, Robin. So this is where some of the big uh, new events had, uh, uh, took place. Uh, right now you're on 12th Avenue looking in eastwardly direction. Um, one of the more notable events is the fact that we completed, LLT has completed the pouring. Gus, could we prevail upon you to come down our end? Sure. Yeah. Those yeah. of us with yeah. all of yeah. yours. Maybe use, this, maybe use this screen. Yeah, happy to. Yes, happy to. I mean, I know you're talking to that screen, but <laughs> that screen doesn't help. I, I, can, I can stay back here. If you don't mind. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, so right now you're standing on 12th Avenue looking in easterly, easterly direction. One of the more notable events is the fact that LLT has completed the pour of all the concrete structure for the truck marshalling building. That was completed sometime in August. Uh, and right now they're progressing with the, uh, some of the exterior finishes, which I'll talk about briefly. The other thing that's notable is that trans the Transformer building has all six feeders energized by Con Ed and will prepare to provide permanent power to both existing Javits as well as we're looking to provide permanent power for the, for the expansion within the next month or two. Pardon? So this is the um, or Levitt Avenue, looking obviously westerly, and this is the beginning of the atrium steel. Uh, the, the, the fabrication for the, uh, of the steel is nearly complete, and the steel direction has progressed substantially. Uh, what you see here on the left-hand side is crane number two. When you were here in June, there were two cranes in that area. There was a crane two and a crane four. <coughs> crane four has moved out to allow the erection of the steel to continue in an easterly manner. When the next month or so, crane number two will also be relocated, moved pretty much over to the edge of the site, closer to 11th Avenue, to allow the erection of the atrium steel to continue, and of course, following up with the deck. Uh, as you can see, the spaces are quite, they're quite evident. You can make out the special event space, the main room, and of course, the expo hall. Um, same scene that you see there, um, taking a few steps back. Um, you can see the crane number two wrecking the steel. Um, pretty soon, the trailer that you see on the right-hand side will be relocated into the building to free up that space for the crane to mobilize into that spot to continue the erection of the atrium steel. You can see some of the mega, the mega trusses, and this is the expo hall is a little more evident from this, from this slide than it was in the previous one. And you can also see the height of the building um, take shape. The eighth floor roof is nearly complete. Um, that's the roof on top of the special event space. So, as I mentioned previously, some a couple of the notable events is the installation of the uh, panel system. Um, right there, you see you can see the metal panels being uh, almost complete on the west elevation of the spine. The spine is the basically the center of the expansion. 
the house is a consider considers all the back of house, um, the back of house spaces, kitchens, bathrooms, administrative offices, some meeting rooms, um, but predominantly uh, all, all the back of house support spaces. And as well as you can see the, the, the direction of the curtain wall on the right hand side. The metal panel system is, as you can see, is nearly completed in the west elevation, is continuing east along the north elevation of the, of the spine. And we look to have that completed over the next few months. Sir? So that's the curtain wall. Uh, it could, uh, the erection began the uh, latter part of August, the last week in August, and it made some substantial progress. Um, and you can see some of the uh, interior spaces through the curtain wall. What's great about the curtain wall is that you will, sitting in a special event space, you can have some pretty phenomenal views of the river and the Jersey Shore from there. Truck marshalling building. Um, if you note, uh, along the upper right hand corner, the, the majority of the right hand corner of the slide, is all, are all the clips are installed for the precast panel. This is another notable event is that the fact that the precast panels, which are nearly completed in fabrication, uh, started to take shape to clad the precast building. Um, you couldn't see it in the previous slide, which I didn't, I, I, I didn't mention it, because it was covered by the temporary fence and sidewalk bridge. But here you can see the first course of the precast taking shape and continuing in a uh, easterly direction. So this is part of the, um, the truck marshalling, one of the last pours that was in place. Um, that's the area that will eventually house the, um, the pavilion area, the pavilion meeting area. So this is the roof of the spine that we're looking at right now. Uh, LLT is getting ready for the pour for the concrete curves. Uh, and they have the mechanical equipment that will be sitting on those curves. Um, ready for delivery. All the big mechanical equipment is, is fabricated and it's ready to be delivered on site. Um, a couple of the units that will be eventually sitting on top of this will be housing the mechanical works for the, uh, for the pavilion. So here's, there are the, well, some of the larger main mechanical units sitting on the eighth floor roof above the expo hall. Um, they've all been delivered and they've all been set. Uh, they're going to, within the next few weeks, they will be, they will start to connect all the ductwork and piping and electrical systems to it. Uh, the goal is to have a portion of these equipment completed and operating by December, so we can, or sooner, so we can have um, temporary heat throughout the winter months, which is the, one of the reasons where the big push is right now to provide temporary permanent power from the transformer building over to the uh, uh, expansion project because there isn't enough power to run the, um, the units with the temp with what's available now. So we will need permanent power to operate those units to continue some of the interior work that's beginning to shape up as we speak. So this is the special event space. Um, as you can see, they get ready for another pour. Uh, this pour is getting ready to be poured uh, within the next two to three weeks. Uh, I mentioned previously some of the interior work that's taking place. The mechanical work is, has substantially progressed. Uh, as you can see here in the spine, the next slide is a little bit better. But you can see at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the photo, the, they're also started framing. Um, and the, um, the plumbing work has progressed, the spring with the fire protection, uh, as well as some of the um, that drywall in an area that's safe, of course, away from the perimeter, uh, and, um, and, uh, and masonry. Here's an example of, the, um, of some of the tricky masonry, actually the mechanical coordination that took place. As you can see, there's a substantial amount of mechanical coordination that was undertaken. All the mechanical coordination for the entire building is complete. So right now it's just a function of doing the fabrication and continue with the installation of not just the ductwork, but the piping, uh, drain lines, conduit, uh, and then of course continue with the interior fit out. 
uh, a great view of the expo hall. Uh, and you can get a good grasp of the size of, of the magnitude of the size of the space. Um, the pour and funding is scheduled to take place within the next month or so. Uh, and that will basically have the expo hall complete, almost complete in terms of concrete and steel erection. This is some of the drywall that's taking place within the expo hall. Um, it's starting to take shape, and you can see the way the space is being laid out um, and some of the finishes. I mean, I was not getting, we're not going to the final finishes, but um, as you can see, we're using green board to prevent some of the moisture in the air, you know, given the, uh, the uh, current weather conditions. Once we're enclosed with the curtain wall taking place, installation as well as the um, as well as the metal panels will be, and the temporary power, the permanent power powering the units, we'll be able to get some heat into these spaces and continue the interior fit out. Um, it might include perhaps putting some tarps up to contain the heat, but uh, it's necessary to maintain a schedule. Any questions? Can you go back to slide 13, please? I'm sorry? Can you go back to slide 13? Slide which? 13. 13. 13. 13. A minor question, but I'd like to ask. Sure. Uh, I'm concerned that there's actually any uh, uh, fall protection in this, in this project. Do we have a safety consultant and, uh, on this? Multiple. So how can it be that this, this edge is, un is unprotected? Good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, having been on too many jobs where people have been hurt, in fact, died. I'd like to know, I'd like, I'd like to report about how this can possibly be that you're showing the board a picture of an open edge, you know, with work going on and there's no protection there. Can you know it? Can you I'll possibly I'll, look into that? Most definitely. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, Rob, you want to carry on? or? Uh, uh, yes, I do. Okay. Not too much more. Uh, David, your point's very well taken. I will say that uh, for uh, basically the superstructure being done, um, the amount of accidents uh, reported on this site have, have, to my experience, been uh, relatively few. I think that's great. I think, I mean, I, I think but, we can never be too careful. Oh, this. I certainly agree with that. No, I, I, I I'm just addressing you your larger point. And as Robin mentioned, knock on wood, we've had relatively few accidents. I, mean, I think that it's absolutely great, but I think we have to maintain. Always. Um, so I would just briefly conclude with a review of schedule and budget, um, starting uh, with schedule uh, and the transformer building first. Um, I think you re recall from, from comments that uh, phase one of the transformer building is concluded. Uh, that transformer building uh, uh, fully empowers the existing facility. Um, and, and as Gus is discussing, will in short order uh, also power the new expansion. So we've turned to phase two of the, the, the phase two and the concluding phase of the transformer building, uh, which is uh, demolishing the pre-existing transformer equipment on the first floor, uh, uh, which is done, the actual demolition is done, and then installing new uh, uh, generating capacity, uh, which Javis hasn't had before. Um, so uh, it's underway, as I say, phase two demolition is completed. Uh, we are now waiting the, uh, we're doing some foundation work to uh, to receive uh, the equipment that will go on the, uh, on, um, on the first floor of the transformer building, and that will be completed uh, in approximately eight or nine months, as I say. And that, uh, recall that that's not on the critical path for a final base project conclusion of the larger expansion, uh, which I will speak to now. Um, uh, the base, pro the, the LLT, the Lindley <coughs> Turner uh, expansion base project, is uh, slated to conclude in March of 2021. So the fact that the transformer building will be concluded, concluded by next summer obviously means it's not part of our critical path to, uh, to expansion conclusion. Uh, but I'm happy to report that the base project uh, being constructed by LLT is on schedule uh, for March of 2021. Uh, and we're certainly driving hard to, uh, to uh, make, make sure that that happens. Um, in terms of budget, uh, the transformer building remains within the previously authorized budget uh, by the directors. Uh, of course, there are change order pressures. Uh, as I think I probably said before, one of my main jobs is to say no um, uh, and try to, um, uh, 
try to minimize change orders to the extent possible. Uh, um, but there are, uh, <clears throat> we work with uh, Tishman Construction Corporation, who's the developer of the transformer building, uh, on a daily basis on those uh, change orders. And as I say, to date, uh, still within the schedule for next summer and within the budget that the directors have allocated. Um, in terms of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the larger expansion project, the $1.2 uh, billion base project, uh, also uh, on budget. Um, we are spending, I think I may have described to the directors before, that uh, there, there are two, so two main sources of funding, which is the billion dollar New York State appropriation, and then the, uh, the securitization, the bonds of the hotel unit fee. Um, pursuant to agreement with Albany, we are um, essentially trying to spend down the appropriation money first, the billion dollar appropriation. And um, so of that, of the $1.2 billion, the bulk of which is being uh, funded by the appropriation, we spent uh, just over half of that. Um, as Gus said, we're at about 55, 56% of overall completion. Uh, the percentage of money spent actually uh, slightly tails behind that because of re uh, retention, um, but uh, uh, but we we remain on budget for that base project. Uh, obviously, there are change order pressures uh, on the expansion budget as well. Um, Alan and I sit with those and discuss those with Gus on a regular basis um, and try to work through those um, also. And also, uh, and that's that. that uh, those change orders would be paid out of the $50 million uh, contingency, which is part of the existing contract with Lindley Turner. Uh, the directors uh, would also recall that there's a separate $50 million uh, pot for uh, fixtures, furnishings, and equipment, FF&E. Uh, we've begun the process of uh, procuring some of that. Again, uh, I believe I may have said to the directors back in June, um, after a conversation between DC, OC, and Lindley's Turner, uh, we've collectively decided that OC <coughs> is the appropriate vehicle for procuring most of the fee, uh, the FF&E. I think probably for obvious reasons, that's what, part of what they do for a living. Um, and so uh, uh, that arrangement is fine with LLT. So we've begun, uh, the directors in, back in June, you may recall that you authorized an FF&E agreement between CCDC and CCOC, um, and, uh, and that we're putting that into place. And uh, the first big ticket item was uh, hiring, uh, not hiring, procuring uh, uh, IT equipment. Um, and so we're off and running, uh, spending some of the $50 million of the FF&E uh, contingency. Uh, but again, uh, to date on the base project, uh, on time, on budget, and we're certainly working to keep it that way. Well, that's the end of my presentation. I'm happy to, uh, to answer any questions. Is that the end of your report, sir? And that would be the end of my report as well. Okay. Any questions for Robin? If not, we'd like to thank everybody for coming, and we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second. Thank you very much. See you in November. Yes, you should anticipate that the next DC meeting would be uh, at the same time as the next post meeting. Remember